Okay, thank you very much. Um, interestingly enough, this is the fourth Bankshire Woodland Symposium I've been to. The first one was the first time I talked as an ecologist, not as a geneticist, and talked about weeds of Bankshire Woodland. And this, in fact, will be the last um, symposium I give as part of Department of Parks and Wildlife. So that's bookending with Bankshire, as you might say. Bankshire is a fairly large genus, no matter which way you look at it. It's either without Dryandra, there's about 80 species, of which 63 are in WA, and if you include Dryander in it, you get a lot more species, but again, you get a huge preponderance of these taxa within Western Australia. The AVA map there, the speckled red dots, give you the general distribution of Bankshire across Australia, and you can see that it sneaks outside Australia just. We have 15 species of Bankshire, they're all true Bankshires in WA that are trees, and in Eastern Australia there are in fact of five that can form trees. The differences between what happens in um, Eastern Australia and WA, they do have Bankshire woodlands in Eastern Australia, but they're a pretty poor cousin to ours. Um, if you've ever been there, there's reasonable Bankshire woodland in Victoria, the result of Paul Gullen's work in mapping the whole state floristically, believe it or not, they've got it all done. Um, they've got two major community types, one's the coastal Bankshire woodland and one's the near coastal Bankshire woodland, which do differ floristically and are both forms of Bankshire integrifolia, but they have a very species poor understory. In New South Wales, it's almost impossible to find a Bankshire woodland, although they do occur. Um, the mapping in New South Wales has not been floristically based, it's been structurally based, so in fact, all of the woodlands that you may get as Bankshire woodlands, they're subsumed <coughs> into their heath category. So we can pretty well say that Bankshire woodlands, in the sense that we think about them, are largely confined to Western Australia. We have 15 species that will form trees, but there really are only a couple that form the dominant trees in these woodlands. And if you notice that list, it's pretty much the same as Vel put up, except for Bankshire burdettii, which is one of the species which can form a tree and a co-dominant with Bankshire menziesii up on the Dandarigan Plateau. All of the others tend to be trees that occur as an understory component or as a co-dominant component within very different woodlands, like Bankshire verticillata, which is a rare species found on granites down around Albany, or Bankshire coccinia, which is emergent over heath, but has just about disappeared because of dieback along the south coast. You'd be pretty hard pushed to find a Bankshire coccinia woodland any longer due to fires and um, dieback. This is one that is um, we've mapped a lot of this, but it, it generally comes out in the floristic um, community types as being a swamp form. So it comes out as one of the Melaleuca communities. It almost always co-occurs with Melaleucas, and although it is a large tree, as you can see that one there, and it is very much a declining, as much as Bankshire lissifolia is in much of its range because of the drying climate, more frequent fires, you rarely get very large Bankshire littoralis anymore, and um, Phytophthora is certainly making a major impact on this. And though it's a tree, it really isn't a Bankshire woodland because as I've said, it normally comes out as floristically as something completely different. One of the ones Val did talk about, of course, is Bankshire lissifolia, which is floristic type 22. And as she said, um, the Swan Coastal Plain has a genetically different provenance than the Lysifolia along the south coast. These are generally bigger trees, they're taller, they have longer leaves and they have smaller inflorescences than the south coast form. The type 22, as Val noted, although it's not declared, probably under the state legislation, if and when the regulations gets done for the new Biodiversity Conservation Act, this will come up as a threatened ecological community at the state level. The Commonwealth, as Val also noted, agreed that our separately listed Bankshire woodlands will remain as a priority because normally when the Commonwealth lists um, communities, they override state legislation. So this is the first time the Commonwealth actually agreed that state listed communities can actually have priority within their, their larger communities. 
And this is the south coast provenance of Banksia lissifolia. Floristically very poorly known. We really know not a lot about it. I couldn't actually place it into whatever community type it may or may not occur in. Um, it's declining markedly and getting slaughtered by Phytophthora. So in, no matter what happens, it's going to be in dire straits. Banksia prionotes um, is generally a fire feature. The trees are killed by fire and come up after fire. It's floristically very variable. Most of the prionotes you see will be of the top sort, that one, where it occurs on dunes on the edge of rivers. And you'll be able to see that north of Perth through the wheat belt. Generally has a fairly species poor understory, but there are also Banksia prionotes woodlands on sand sheets throughout the wheat belt. And they are much less common. That's this one, and in certain areas, such as at Querreding, um, this is a state-listed community. It's a mixture of Banksia prionotes with Banksia cuneata. Banksia cuneata is a rare, declared rare species, normally that co-occurs with Xylomelon and Gustafolium. So this is a state-listed community called Banksia prionotes with Xylomelon and Gustafolium on deep yellow sands. The banksias in the wheat belt that are woodlands do tend to occur on these large and not um, co-occurring co sand patches. So there are some to the north of Perth, the south and east. Querreding, this is the only large patch of this remaining. The Shire is about 96% cleared. So this 200 hectare patch is a very significant area. Again, we have a decent amount of floristic data on this, but it has not been collated. But there is no doubt that there are a series of quite rare Banksia woodlands scattered through the wheat belt. So what are the features of our Banksia woodlands? They have a low tree diversity, about 15 common species, Val Gavis, some of those. They have a very large number of understory species. In the 233 sites we did on the coastal plain, the 616 cats that were found in it in those Banksia woodland sites. They have a very high species diversity per site, 30 to 90 species averaging about 55 per 100 square metres. And they have a very high beta diversity, that means there's a considerable changeover in species between areas. A few taps on more than 75% of the sites, most of them are rare, rarely recorded 45%. 30% have ecotypic variants. And the flora of the Banksia woodlands in WA is really highly endemic. So we've got 42% of the taxa in those sites are shrubs, 258 in fact species, again. 40% of them are herbs, 247 taxa in fact, and they're perennial herbs, largely not annuals. So long-lived perennial herbs are a major feature. Sedges are fairly well represented, 69 taxa or 11% of the flora is sedges. And one of the groups that is very poorly represented compared to Eastern Australia in woodlands are the grasses. The sedges have largely replaced the grasses in Southern Western Australia because of the sedges' really amazing ability to suck nutrients out of very nutrient poor soils. So the key in the Banksia woodlands is very high diversity of shrubs and quite high diversity of sedges which have sand binding roots which enable them to be long lived and to slurp nutrients out of our terrible soils. And these are really crucial bits to remember if you're trying to revegetate these because the sedges and the herbs, perennial herbs are often hard to bring back but they are some of the major features. Most of that stuff I've talked about comes from this publication here which came out this last year, although it was launched by a minister this year. Um, and we, in that we summarise what's known about the floristics of Banksia woodlands. There's somewhere approximating 20 different sorts on the coastal plain, um, all subsumed under the EPBC Act. And the key about our Banksia woodlands is really this photograph here. This shows a Banksia dominated congen below Mount Peron in Mount Lesueur National Park. About five kilometres away from this is the end of the Banksia Woodland TEC. And I can guarantee you, because I've done it, the floristics of the understory of that Banksia Woodland TEC is absolutely identical to this Congan Heathland. So the key bit, the key message I would have for you is the Banksia Woodlands are a form of Quongan, which is why they're so unusual and so unique. 
They do have some very rare species in it, not just as they're really real, it's not just me. This is one of them. This is Conosperm mundulatum. That's its totally known distribution. Not only is it incredibly rare, but on the west side of it, there are a whole series where it meets um, triply nervum. There are a whole series of hybrids. That's triply nervum, that's undulatum, and there's some other hybrids. So often maintaining the ecological processes of these very rare species in Bankshire woodlands is going to be tricky. And there's a PhD currently running on Conosperm mundulatum. But it's not just the rare things that have unusual variants. Acacia pulchella, the commonest component after fires of Bankshire woodlands, has about eight different ecotypic variants across the coastal plain, um, including in one site where we've got um, this, which is um, Acacia pulchella var gliberima, grows with Acacia pulchella var pulchella. They don't co-flower. They flower at least two months separately. This one's a suckering form with weeping pendulous branches. So there is a lot to be learned still about the components. Some of which have been worked out. This is just one. The Jacksonias were all under one thing in Perth and now they actually go under three. So there is that one in Kings Park, that one's in Bowl Park and that one is in the um, species rich Bankshire woodlands on the eastern side of the coastal plain. We also get quite a lot of genetic variation within populations of Bankshire menziesii, some of which are just colour forms like this. They come in a lot, but they don't mean much. But there is also, as I've said, very considerable genetic variation within all of the major Bankshires that form Bankshire woodlands that come from the south of their range, meaning trees, up to little herbs, in the, or not herbs, but shrubs in the northern part of their range. And one of the problems we're having is that that's part of the freeway and you can see that um, they're plonked in things from around Eniaba next to the normal ones here. And a major amount of our weeds in our current Bankshire woodlands are being turned up by this sort of um, chook mix planting that's occurring on the, main, on the roads adjacent to them. And that could have quite significant um, issues in the future. My conclusions are that the Bankshire woodlands we should be very proud of because they are a unique West Australian form of quangga. They're nowhere else. They're also, I think, importantly, they are part of the third level of biodiversity. Conserving them requires the conservation and knowledge of all the other levels of biodiversity. But if we just <coughs> concentrate on the species or on the genes, we'll lose the communities. And a knowledge of the variation of both the floristics and the Bankshire woodland communities of our state are still pretty imperfectly understood. They're certainly not adequately mapped. And losing the Bankshire woodlands, my last message, they give, if you look at George Seddon's book, it's Perth, it's sense of place in the planet. And losing them, I think, would be very sad. And in the 40 years since we did the first one of these, we have lost an awful lot of them. And it's nice to see a symposium that's looking at how we can actually replenish and replace some of our woodlands into the future. Thank you.